Hey guys, I'm in a suburban neighborhood just a little north of Calgary and uh, today I want to show you how you can have a home-based business growing microgreens and you can scale it. These guys here, this operation is called Micro Acres and these guys are doing about $10,000 a month in revenue for their microgreen and it's two two people running it, husband and wife team working about 40 hours a week and they're doing those kind of numbers in their basement so we're gonna go check this basement out and uh, see what it's all about My name is David. My name is Kristen. We live in Airdrie, Alberta, and this is our little microgreen farm, Micro Acres. We're again in Airdrie, Alberta, just a little bit north of Calgary. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in about 400 square feet of germinating area uh, and grow area. We're running right now about 170 racks, give or take between both germinating off to your left here. So this is kind of where everything kind of starts. So right now we have about 70 trees kind of growing. Everything goes had it on a smaller brassica stale. Uh, other things we do, stacked peas, radishes, sunflowers. Popcorn. We have uh, popcorn growing right here. Just kind of germinating, kind of do this. Oh, Keep nice. it nice and simple. There you go, beauty. It's so about five days in on those guys. We got some micro leak germinating up there. So these guys are running about two days old right now. So I'm just starting to pop up a little bit. They run about a six day cycle before they go under the light. Mm -hmm. Already you can smell the onion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, run two six foot tables. This is where we're basically all planting, harvesting, cutting, Packing. everything's done. Yeah. We use um, everything's biodegradable, compostable, corn based containers. Oh, okay. Out of a company out of Los Angeles. So we use three different sizes two for retail and two for wholesale. And then, yeah, this is the main <laughs> growing area here. So we have five fans running simultaneously 24 7. Uh, one of Kirst's favorites here, he just shows here, is our micro leak, mm -hmm. which is growing quite nicely right now. So these ones are running at about two weeks right now, and these guys are running at nine days. So you're seeing about actually two inches of growth within that. Hull stay on, which is quite nice. So chefs love these, again, the dehydrated aspect. Mm -hmm. Two is that little crunch, sweet scallion. A little bit of wheatgrass we have kind of going out, so we actually supply. Uh, uh, University of Calgary actually takes quite a bit of our product as they developed a whole new program for bringing health nutrition to the students. So they did a big revamp last year mm -hmm. and added a bunch of food stations. So we do about nine different greens to them, one to be wheatgrass so they can do the juicing, radishes, broccoli, and they're adding that really cool culture of healthy um, you know, microgreens to their products instead of having the typical cafeteria you know cafeteria food, food mm -hmm. pizzas the brown golden crust stuff right mm -hmm. so it's really nice to be able to work with them yeah. and work with their chefs and we're seeing a lot in the calgary region is that chefs are starting to love uh, you know microgreens as a nutritional valuation but also an approachable affordable price mm -hmm. yeah and so that's that's your background is in is absolutely in culinary yeah. and so you've got sort of an in with these guys in a way and you speak their language it certainly helped understanding my background i operated restaurants for the last 15 years built them, general managed them, so I had the opportunity to work with chefs, understanding food costs, understanding where our food comes from, and ironically mm -hmm. how much has actually increased in price over the years. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we try to mitigate here at the farm, is to bring local fresh product, but at a very foundational base root price. So we're undercutting a lot of the competition by about half, and we're still making you know 80% margins on a lot of respect. Yeah. We're, because understand the culture, understand how to bring that to the table, through chefs, through general subscriptions, mm -hmm. through our retail clients, through our farmers markets, we can, it's not about you know, competition necessarily, it's for us it's bringing just a good product to the table for families, to chefs, to students, yeah. Yeah. on a multi different uh, aspect, so. So mm -hmm. on the production side, you got you were saying you're averaging around $25 a flat. Give or take, yeah, so. So and you're doing like 250 flats a week, so. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, incredible, good, yeah. that's incredible, and you guys, are still working still work other jobs, jobs yeah. yeah and then you're jobs. doing this what yeah. you said was it 40 hours a week right now we're running about 40 hours a week outside of the you know the usual nighttime social media and facebook and instagram but that includes our delivery time our cutting time yeah. everything and everything. that's 40 hours yeah. cumulative between the two of us okay that's between not 40 the hours two each. of you yeah. oh that's even better yeah, yeah. That's so that's 40 better. hours combined total between harvesting cutting deliveries again we you know all the deliveries you know today i did 
five hours of deliveries for almost 30 restaurants. Because yeah. we're all within probably about five square miles of each other, relatively speaking. Yeah. Wow. So we choose a lot of our restaurants on that basis so we can kind of hit one after another to really mitigate our labor. And that's a lot of the reasons we choose what we choose so we can kind of save the overhead, save the labor, which then trickles down essentially to the consumer, whether mm -hmm. it's a chef, a retailer, or just our neighbor. Yeah, yeah. So one question I know some people are going to ask is, I know the answer, but I, w I want you to get it on camera, <laughs> is why you're using two inch deep flats opposed to one inch deep. Most microgreen growers use one inch deep flats, yep. myself included, but what, what is it about the two inch deep flats that makes the difference for you? For sure. So one of the reasons why we chose that is twofold. Uh, the first one being just, again, on a labor and essentially being an urban farm setting is obviously in being yeah. a basement. We like to keep things clean. We don't mm -hmm. have the ability to have just an open ground. We can just kind of swipe through the soil. So we're able to put our soil into these trays with very little waste of soil. Yeah. We can dump it in there. We can mm -hmm. make it a lot flatter. We can tamp it and we grow it. And the secondary measure is we find a lot of these act as a buffer for the sides. So yeah. if something gets a little bit too big, if something starts to lean to the side, it acts as a wall which actually then helps push up the micro mm -hmm. and keeps a little more structured, a little better airflow. And we find actually gives a little bit better flavor and varietal to the actual microgreen which itself. Which kind of really with the radish especially. It helps it stay upright. Yes, yeah, yeah. What is your guys' weak flow? And I'm interested too, since you guys are a couple, mm -hmm. you're married, you have kids. Yeah. yeah. Take me through your week. Like sure. I want to know how do you balance it all out? Yeah. Like, Kind of take me through the Monday to, do you have weekends off? Like take me through your sort of mm -hmm. average week, how you're balancing that between your For day sure. jobs and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so basically start off on, uh, let's start off on Monday. So Monday's a mid day. So I've taken yeah. essentially Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off my full-time job uh, to structure what we do. But Monday's a mid day. So catching up with invoices, mm -hmm. reaching out to new chefs, essentially structuring out our week. Taking meetings. Taking basically. meetings. So today's mm -hmm. my meetings in, uh, in town. I always, again, try to minimize the labor aspect. So I always do labors either on midday or I do it after my delivery. So I'm already in town. Calgary is about 20 miles out from where we are. So it gives us an opportunity to kind of, again, circumnavigate other aspects so we can kind of save our time. Uh, Tuesday is uh, bright and early. We're up by 3 a.m. and we do all our cutting. So we cut from 3 a.m. to about 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh, and we can cut about 90 trays in the time and that's including packaging. So the net, our daughters are both up at 6.30 so and we, then we're basically free to Right. Be so to be parents. Exactly. So wow. an hour and a half for in like school, that. breakfast mm -hmm. for us to enjoy that family. There's got to be that balance of life. And that's what I've yeah. learned running restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, you're running 18 hour days. Forget it. I no. don't mind running 18 hour days as long as there's like a purpose behind it. But this yeah. is in our own home. Our kids are down here. They're able to test product. So all those. So then Tuesday, basically, I head out and go into the restaurants into Calgary, mm -hmm. head all over uh, Southern Alberta for that. Back probably by about noon if I don't have any meetings. And the rest of Tuesday is just cleaning up, managing the farm, mm -hmm. and saying that forward. On uh, Tuesday afternoons, I head out to our local clients here in Airdrie and our do our monthly subscription drop-offs. Mm -hmm. So that it's weekly subscriptions. They um, they come with us. They order whatever they want, and I will drop to their door free of charge. So we've um, about two hours of delivery time, usually. That's a big day. Yeah, we did about Tuesday, Tuesday's a big day. We Tuesday's 20, a big day. Yeah, yeah. We 25 today. 25, 30. Yeah, I did about 30 drop-offs today it's in about awesome. two hours. So uh, we did run a bit of a sale, so we had some more drop-offs as a result of that. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, I you know, with about an hour to two hours depends on what comes in weekly. Oh. Wow. Then mm -hmm. Wednesday's just day-day. Uh, day. I'm at my other full-time job. Uh, Wednesday night, we soak everything for Thursday morning plant. So it's basically prepping the farm Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Thursday mm -hmm. morning, back at it, up by about 3 or 4 in the morning and kind of get everything done. So we run Thursdays, our smaller ones, we run about 70 to 80 trays uh, planting on that day. Mm -hmm. um, we also cycle out all the ones that are in the germinating to the light. So kind of everything we have everything we do over a seven day period is designed around our nine to 10 day rotation. Mm -hmm. So we're down the farm doing the cutting at the same time if I'm doing all the planting, Kira can be doing the germinating. Mm -hmm. And getting things in the watering light. and things like that. Right, so there's never a time there's not one of us working. So we're always on a rotational cyclical base. Yeah. So we're mitigating the labor, on using both for our labor hours the best we can. Yeah. Thursday again is cutting in the or planting in the morning. Same thing. Our girls are up by yeah. six thirty. So it's and then that's the goal is to be done by then. Yeah. And the Thursday afternoon mm -hmm. to Saturday evening, really nothing goes on except just tending to the farm, usual watering, watering checking mm -hmm. for premises, yeah. all the usual stuff for that. Uh, then back at Saturday night, we do all of the again soaking for the Sunday morning, which is our secondary plant. 
Uh, again, up at it at about three in the morning, do all the planting on mm -hmm. Sunday, and then we do all the cutting as well for delivery. So, so that's Sunday's another big day. Another big us. day for delivery. Yeah. I deliver out to uh, just outside of Alberta, so or, or outside of Calgary to uh, Canmore and Cochrane, and then that's provides some of the hotels in eastern Alberta, western Alberta for mm -hmm. that, and then come back, and then we have the Sunday afternoon off. So why did you choose to do it that way? Was it because just having delivery day, like Sunday seems like a strange day yep. to do that. For sure. Is that just because you had to line it up on certain delivery days just to make part, the whole thing work with everything part, else you do? Part and parcel, part of it is that a lot of, again, my back would be restaurants, a lot of, most of all chefs want deliveries Thursday, Friday. So yeah. Weekends are busy, that's what they love it. But we have, we're running 10 day shelf life on our micros on a minimum. We can run three weeks on our pea shoots, but we mm -hmm. actually set everything up on a weekly standing par. So all of our chefs get everything. Mm -hmm. So it's very different. We're changing how restaurants actually receive a lot of their produce. Right. So we can get it fresh in the week. So on Monday as a client, if you're going to a restaurant, you're getting fresh product. But we also know on Friday, it has the exact same quality consistency as was received on the Monday. Mm -hmm. Sunday you also did, it originally was a day off. Right. For you. So we, it was from your day, your weekly job. Yep. Sunday was a day off. So it was a day to be able to throw everything in, get it all done. Two wow. full process. Two folds, and, and then restaurants love it on Sunday. And they love too. it. We do yeah. some really unique places. We do some high end bars, lounges. We're sitting, you know, mm -hmm. looking outside the box of just restaurants. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, most people don't approach, you know, a sports bar. But these guys have the opportunity yeah. to take some great product, but nobody talks to them outside mm -hmm. of the typical purveyors for produce mm -hmm. in Canada. And a lot of restaurants are actually closed on Mondays in Calgary. Yep. So wow. we moved it to a Sunday so that they get first that. Sunday. Or they get it on the Tuesday, Tuesday yep, afterwards. Exactly. Wow. Um, very cool. If people want to follow you guys, what's the best way to do that? Uh, twofold. The best would be Instagram. So at Micro Acres yeah. is our main one. So that's what we do a lot mm -hmm. of things in the farm. That also goes onto our Facebook, which is obviously just at Micro Acres mm -hmm. as well. Those are the best ways to kind of track our farm, see what we're doing. We put out, you know, nutritional valuation. But the biggest thing is, you know, really focusing on the microgreens and how they're coming to mm -hmm. the community, yeah. the pictures and getting some unique microgreens that are not just the typical pea shoot sunflower. We want to bring stuff to the market that people mm -hmm. have heard about, they see, but at the same time, it's they're really easy and approachable to grow. Yeah. Uh, and then they offer a great new market for, you know, you to bring to, you know, chefs, to restaurants, to retailers mm -hmm. that have unique flavors. You know, something like spicy, they can choose this. It doesn't have to be just arugula. It can be mustards and radishes mm -hmm. and really neat different varietals. So, yeah. so that's what we really do through our Instagram is to kind of uh, bring about some unique aspects and you always show pictures of the farm, always posting every day, different aspects of it, different ways we grow, our lights, our trays. Again, to bring this to the average farm, that's all it is here. We're an yeah. average farm, we love what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. We like growing and keep it simple. Awesome. That's it. Yeah.